Well hi folks, Stratman here from Pipware.com. Haven't done a video for a while and um, this is a uh, day, day off before I head back up to continue my software contract. Uh, we just had the earthquake over the weekend which was um, quite traumatic. Um, but uh, here's, here's a trade anyway. Um, I recorded it uh, on Jing and now I'm just um, narrating it. So you'll see it flick backwards and forwards between my Ducoscopic platform, which you're seeing here, and my MetaTrader 4 platform, uh, which has got my dashboard on it. So what I'm seeing here is that uh, price has broken through, made a new high here, but it's also made a made a new low. Now previously, which we can't see here, is that prices were in a in a bit of a downtrend on the hourly chart. This is the M5 on the the uh, pound yen. And what I'm looking for here is that I, I don't like getting into a trade right on the on the uh, extremity. So I wouldn't like to be taking a long ride at this point, and I wouldn't like to be taking a short ride at this point. Because price has been travelling downwards um, on the one hour chart, I'm looking at taking shorts. So what I'm interested in seeing here is I've had a trend line break. Um, this trend line goes down to another point uh, way down here somewhere, a low that was made earlier. And um, now that we've made a new low on the M5, I'm waiting for it to pull back and make a, a lower high. That's, that's essentially the, uh, what I want. So let's just play the video and um, just watch what kind of develops. Now, this is the MetaTrader version of this. As you can see, we've just broken the previous one hour candle as um, shown by the dashboard. So I know that this is a good sign for a, a, a trade to go short if we've broken below that that uh, that previous one hour. That's what that bottom line is there. Um, also, we've broken through the uh, the M15 SMA60, and also we've we've broken through the M5 SMA60. And what I kind of expect here is that price will come down through and pull back up into here and uh, we'll get our entry uh, basically when this pulls back and it will probably line up very similar to uh, what's going to happen on the um, the M1 as well so that would be our entry so um, I've got stochastics down here but it's, it's a bit hard to see because it's it's off the off the bottom of the video I apologize for that All right let's just get this video underway and uh, as time goes by we can see that Price is pulling up into here. Um, this is kind of like you'll see see this moves quite quickly and jumps because of the video I was pausing and playing and and so on and uh, and we can see that right at this point I'm seeing what I expect to be kind of my my uh, bounce off the bottom and there's my entry on my Jukus copy platform. Um, and if we go back there, I will uh, show you what happens with the stop and there we go right so on the Jukus copy platform there was the break of the uh, initial trend line here's the pullback on the MetaTrader platform um, we've seen that it's kind of done a bounce off the SMA60 there's my 10 pip stop there I'm going to pull this um, this this line down to the top here now one of the good things with Jukus copy is that you can show your candles in bid mode or ask mode so you see your prices uh, your price feed is as ask in price or or the bidding price and therefore it matches up quite well with my stop loss so if I change my chart over to showing asking prices it means that when the candle here comes up and touches that that's when I'll be stopped out um, if I was doing a, sh doing a long trade I'd be wanting to show bid prices because then my stop when it's hit uh, would be right on the money I don't need to take into account the spread to try and uh, work out how far my stop needs to be above or anything like that. That's just it's 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 uh, something that's quite useful. Okay, so anyway, we've entered the trade. Let's see uh, what what happens with it. So back to the uh, MetaTrader platform here. Back to the Jukus Copy One. You can see I've just realigned my stop to just the top of that that uh, the high that we got. So it's it's less than ten pips that stop, and we can see that uh, on the M1 trade is developing M5 developing here um, and we're just looking for it to break the bottom of here 
and and we had a new one hour candle form and you can see the line here of the previous one hour we've broken that so a break of the previous one hour candle is always good and we're seeing that we'd like to see a break of this line down here which is the previous four hour candle and um, it looks like it's going to do that as well and indeed it did and we're on our way to uh, making some serious money here with this trade um, I'm going to change over the H1 time frame and I, I do that um, particularly when we're just about to have a new H1 candle formed uh, because then I can start managing the trade on the H1 and so my stop would go above the the H1 when the new H1 candle is formed. Um, my expectation being that um, something like this, if this was a long trade we've got another H1, another H1 and um, we'd want to stay in a, a nice good consistent movement like this one H1, 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 this one H1, H1, H1 um, not breaking its previous H1 candle. So that's the idea there. We move on, just um, get this video playing a bit more, and we can see here now that um, on my Jukas Copy platform, um, we're, we're now managing it on H1, and our stop is right above that candle. We're back on the, uh, the MetaTrader platform there, just watching the trade. Um, I'm looking for a target around, uh, I'm going to watch around the 130, but I'm also watching for the bottom of here because this this looks like it uh, looking through it to the left here. This is a good support point. So um, I'm looking for prices come down to 130, uh, and then I need to be watching and managing this well. So we've just gone H1 here. Again, we've hit the 130, and I'm now watching very very carefully. Um, I'm kind of expecting that we'll probably get a retracement, maybe back up to my M5 here, or my M15, and um, just watching and watching, uh, and, and in fact, price does drop down through the previous H1 candle again, which is always a good sign, so we're forming uh, lower lows on our H1, and there we go, we're, we're dropping down even further, and, uh, but I'm, I'm very conscious of what's going on on my other time frames. Um, here's M5. I'm watching it for my management of my trade. Um, we came back up and retested the 130. Are we going to go down further? Well, we may do. Here's this point here that I was talking about before. Maybe I should have pulled out at this point. Um, and here we are. I'm out of the trade uh, for about 50 pips. So, um, and we'll switch back to the MetaTrader and we can see yeah, I pulled out right at this kind of what I consider to be quite a good support resistance point. 50 pips is a good trade. I'm happy with that. Um, and I was looking at my dashboard here, and if we just look at some of the figures on the dashboard, we can see that, look, we the fractal distance was 97 pips. I mean, you normally get about a, um, a 30 to 60 pip swing on the, uh, the pound US and on the pound yen, you know, around 100 pips. I'm looking to bail the trade um, if it's if it's moved that far. So um, and also if we have a look at the uh, the pipware charts, we can see that on them as well, um, we've broken through the H1, and we're probably expecting to see a pullback back up into this at some point, and uh, and so we really do want to be getting considering getting out of the trade. Well, I hope that was helpful. Um, yeah, hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into um, how I trade. Um, we'll just let that, that video just run through to the end. Um, a good little trade, and uh, might do another one and uh, see where we go with that. Okay, we will catch you folks later.